Absolute Wonder Woman? More like absolutely great. Okay, we got that easy zinger out of the way. Hello everyone, your buddy Navigus here with my review of Absolute Wonder Woman issue 1. So, quick primer for those of you not in the know. The Absolute line of comics is basically DC's answer to the relaunched Ultimate Universe, the premise being about a world where DC's most iconic heroes are stripped of major aspects of their origin, but still end up becoming symbols of hope in a world that's lost it. But you don't really need to know that much about this universe, how this universe is created or to enjoy it, as this issue works as a great standalone introduction. This book is brought to us by writer Kelly Thompson. Thompson, art by I Hated Sherman, and, and coloring by Jordi Ibelair. This issue focuses on Diana's debut saving Gateway City from an invasion of demonic-looking aliens called the Harbingers. First, and it's split between this and the past, showing Diana's origin. Origin and the witch Cersei be acting as our narrator. The narrative that Miss Thompson lays out for us, as well, it's a bit basic. I'll give you a second. So yeah, the, now the narrative Miss Thompson lays out for us, while pretty simple, does a good job of of like setting up the main series and has a really strong emotional core, especially with the flashbacks. We see how, uh, yeah, just let me get to it. it we see her. The gods dropping her off, not to be raised by Cersei in hell. And we see how even at a young age, Diana uh, had had a great inner compassion that's vile to any version of Wonder Woman. The scene where she kisses the hell dragon on the head was just adorable. Well, and we see her having an influence on Cersei. She, with her island prison in Tartarus becoming more colorful and bright thanks to the mother to other bonding. And the bond between the two can be summed up up in one quote. But raising a child is how you fall in love, on love, but letting them go is how you prove your love. Uh, this issue also raises play of questions right with exp exploration and future issues. What did the Amazons do to anger the gods to the point of getting rid of all of them, save for Diana? Who are the Harbingers and why have they started attacking Gateway City? And how will the world react to the existence of the Wonder Woman? Those questions will have to wait for future issues. So for now, let's talk about the best aspect like, of this issue. So as you can plainly see, the art. Safe to say, it's spectacular. I love the direction in Hayden Sherman's artwork is taking. taking there's a, I can see a feel bit of influence from like Greek stylization when it comes to the art. I can totally see some of these images on the side of, out of ancient Vosses. Is I love how the panel layout outworks on some of these pages. Pages, especially how they're laid out in two page spreads. My eyes were constantly engaged while reading this book, and look, and yeah, now there are certain moments where they bring up ink focus on something that ink for maximum impact. That everything flows at a really great pace. And let me just get to it. Who my favorite bit. So yeah, it's this bit at the end, and where Diana is evading in the eye beams. Yeah, this little bit where Diana is evading the eye beams of Harbinger Prime. I'm with each panel focusing on each individual motion Diana does, as in order to evade it. It and the paneling basically brings your eyes to it. I also like how, like how the how the panels aren't all just standard. Or like square rectangular comic panels. We actually do get to see these circles, curves, all that stuff. It just makes the tick out. Right. Oh, and of course, the designs for Diana and the creatures in this series are really as are damn good. Uh, they're just my kind of thing. I love the dark at dark fantasy aesthetic this book has, combining with Greek imagery that Wonder Woman comics are known for. Yeah, I'm really a sucker for this kind of style. Diane's design from the black and red costume to her massive Athena blade are tickling the black clover bl slash bloodborne loving part of my brain. So yeah, in summary, I'm all in on Absolute Wonder Woman. And considering all the regular issues are sold out of my local store and the only issue I could, could buy was this foil variant, it seems that a lot of people are on board too. There's plenty of room for the series to grow and more of this art is going to be a treat to see. 
I'm giving Absolute Wonder Woman a 4 out of 5. If you can find a decently priced copy, go pick this book up. And be sure to stay tuned to the channel for when I cover the, or future issues of this series and uh, many other awesome comics. Until next time, have a great day.